so we have lots of good um, good questions here. Um, maybe we'll start with some recent ones. Ryan's asking, uh, is that chair, so if you go back maybe a couple of slides, is that chair flanking a coffee table in the middle acceptable? Um, and I think this was maybe one back where there were, yeah, where those, uh, I think those uh, in the corner here. Oh, um, yeah, the coffee table is sort of the, <laughs> Uh, and you guys are asking all these great questions. Uh, the coffee table is this kind of unusual, like pretty much all of the other pieces of furniture have very strict rules about them. Uh, obviously, I need to be able to get into a chair, right? Uh, obviously, the desk needs to work like a desk would work. Um, the bookshelf needs to be facing in the correct direction. The file cabinet needs to be facing in the correct direction. As far as I can tell, the coffee table can be either off by itself, just sitting in a corner, it can be next to a chair. I think the coffee table is the one that has the most flexibility uh, and is the one I would be least worried about in terms of uh, how it sits. So I actually think in that spot it's probably okay. That's not one of the reasons why this would be a failing example. Dave is asking, can you put the 60 inch circle in the door swing area? Um, you know, I've seen, I've seen conflicting things about it. Uh, if you can, I would try to keep it separate, but I don't think that's gonna fail you. Okay. Um, and then let's see here. Uh, is it required to have the 30 ex 36 inch clear space all around the conference table or the table for four? Yeah, so this is kind of an interesting thing. The, uh, the issue is I have to be able to get to everything, every piece of furniture uh, and into every room if I'm in a wheelchair, hence the 36 inch. So if, for example, on this plan, if you look, you come into this room, uh, I come into this room, I have the 36 inch clear as it goes along all the way to there, but then I don't have 36 inch uh, behind that chair, right? That's not 36 inches, but it doesn't matter because I can get to this chair, I can get to this chair, I can get to, I can get to all of these, I can get to this, I can get to all of these different pieces of, of uh, furniture, and if I wanted to, I could go back the other way and get to all the other ones. So I don't need to have this 36 inch go all the way around as long as I can get to eat to every single piece. However, if for some reason I had to get behind this, uh, to let's say I couldn't get through over here for some reason, there was something blocking the way, and I had to go through uh, from this side over to get to that, this would not be enough and I'd have to find a way to shift that conference room table to make sure I had the 36 inches there. Okay. Uh, and the same would be true on the four top as well. As, as long as I can get to each chair, that's fine. The only reason I would have to get around the whole thing is if I've laid it out in some way that I have to get around it to get to some other piece of furniture. Okay. And then Ryan's asking, uh, can secretary desks really go back to back or do you need a 36 inch circle from back of chair to the next desk? So I think it means, I think he's referring to these guys kind of being back to back. Um, yeah, so again, uh, if I, th I assume you're talking about something like, like this, um, with a chair and a chair, uh, that's fine. Um, if it's the, because you have access to this chair and you have access to that chair, um, so, so that is, is a-okay. Um, the, the, the trick is you just have to be able to get to every piece of, of uh, furniture. Um, so the, the hard ones start coming when you have something like um, uh, not quite big enough, but oops. Uh, when you have something like like this, I've got a chair there and a chair there and a wall or something, and that space I have to have, make sure that that's fully 36 inches in order to get into that space, um, and that ends up being a lot bigger than it looks when you're, um, when you're first laying it out and it starts adding up quite a bit. Uh, but if, there, if there's something like this or it's back to back like this, um, those, are, those are almost always gonna be just fine. So Amelia has an interesting question. She says, can you touch on how important it is to overlap walls? She talks about how her first time through she thought the walls uh, just went next to each other and didn't realize until she added doors at the end that they needed to overlap to cut through. So maybe there's actually a, a broader question just about like kind of, you know, actually doing, you know, yeah, putting the, the real pieces in place. Yeah, yeah. so you're, you're uh, overlapping them and it's, 
it's all supposed to be self-healing and that it will figure out that if you overlap it, it's, it's going to sort of put it together that, that, that those are, that's actually one wall. This is one of the reasons why you use check um, because if you, uh, uh, if, if, if something is overlapped too much uh, and so it's not able to do the self-healing thing, then it should pop out as red. If they're too far apart from each other, it should do the same thing. So you actually use the tools uh, at your hand and it should be fairly simple and straightforward, but this is why you practice it. So like, this is you know, exactly what you just said. Um, you, know, you, you try it once and you sort of think you're doing it and then you realize, oh wait, this isn't working. Like, you, do, you practice it a couple of times and by the third time you've done it, you, that, it'll be second hand, you won't even think about it. Uh, going back to, uh, to, to this vignette, uh, Vanessa's asking, uh, doesn't the door on the right of the large room uh, need to be left-handed so that people exiting through the corridor don't get blocked by the door? So I believe it's this door she's talking about. Um, that's a, that is certainly a good idea so they could exit out to the stair more easily because they're not being blocked by the door. Um, but no, the computer is not going to see that. The only thing the computer is going to see is that it's uh, swinging into the corridor because it's an egress door. And the reason that that's okay is because we know that these corridors are um, six foot wide, and so the, the door swinging into that, I have enough room to easily get by, in the same way that anybody who's already in that corridor has enough room to get by. Um, it, it's a good point. Um, uh, from a design standpoint, it's probably a, a better idea, uh, but it does not matter from the, the so, so my answer to you is yes, but not really. Um, like I, I totally agree with that as a, as a point, but not on the exam, doesn't matter. Either way is okay. Okay, and then uh, we'll take our final question here from um, Luis, uh, who's asking, can the side of a chair be against the front of an executive desk? The side of a chair. Oh, yeah. Going back to the interior layout. Yeah, that, you know, um, I, I actually think that's probably okay, um, as long as it's not touching and in the way. Um, but they. So a few years ago, um, well, many years ago, th this program was designed in like 1994, and it went online in like '96 or so. Uh, so you can imagine that this is a kind of complicated, clunky um, uh, little program because it's made at a very different time. Um, but one of the few changes they actually made in it, uh, I think probably in about maybe 2000 or so, was they made the executive chairs have uh, that little arcing shape to it. Um, they didn't originally have that. And the reason they did that is because they were finding that people were sort of um, uh, you know, taking a, a room uh, and making it easier, to, they would just put the executive desk right up against the wall. So there's my chair, there's my desk, um, and it kind of wasn't the point. That's not really what the design was supposed to be like. It was supposed to be like an office where, you know, somebody is sitting there and looking important and you come in the door and they yell at you. Right, um, so it was the idea was that the the desk was floating in the space, and so to stop people from putting it up against the wall, they made that little little shape uh, where it has that arc. Uh, so I think they like the idea of there being an open space next to that. Um, however, I think you could make a claim for there being um, there being a chair like pretty close to that is probably okay. Um, so I think as long as you can get around to everything else, I think it's probably all right. Um, but uh, you should think of that executive desk from that light. It's like it's not supposed to be hidden up against something. It's not like it should be proud and in the space. Okay, and I lied. I'm going to take one more question here. <laughs> uh, Jonathan has one. He's saying, when drawing the rooms, are you supposed to erase the walls that overlap the demising exterior walls? Meaning that you know the room is yeah. drawn as a box, so when you place it in the corner, it'll overlap the existing walls. Can that happen? Um, I I believe you just overlap them. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the last time I actually did it. Uh, it. It should be it should become pretty obvious when you if you do a check. Um, but I, yeah, I believe you just overlap them, and it should be fine. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Mike, uh, and thanks to everybody who tuned in. If you'd like to attend our next ARE Live broadcast. 
Visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register to attend. Just like today, you'll have a chance to ask questions and share your answers for live feedback during the broadcast. And to learn more about our AIA ARE prep curriculum, you can go to blackspectacles.com. Uh, we'll also put a link in the show notes. Uh, and for those of you who are ready and want to get busy preparing for the ARE, you can use a 15% coupon off of um, all of your charges uh, of any AIA ARE prep membership by visiting AIA.org slash ARE prep. And that's ARE prep is one uh, word with no spaces. And finally, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think and share any suggestions that you may have. I promise we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. So thanks for watching.